my life last last sense you uh-huh. And every it's time they mention me love Increase my life expectancy uh-huh. Maybe love. this is my destiny Love and love. hated love. And hated as love Never fight Spider-Man, 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 Spider-Man,
And then Mole Alley Cox, the other tight end, one catch, 35 yards, touchdown. Guys like Josh Downs and Michael Pittman did nothing. Josh Downs had two catches. Michael Pittman had one catch. And then for sacks, you had Day Abogibo had a sack and a half, and then Zaire Franklin had a .5 sack, and Kenny Moore with the interception. So <clears throat> this game really looked great at first. The first half was amazing. The Rams played flawless. Outside of missed field goals by Brett Maurer, it looked like this was going to be easy going all day. Um, Stafford had time in the pocket. The run game was going. They couldn't stop us any which way we went. The offensive line played great. Dalton. Um, Dotson, sorry, filled in at right guard. And no boom went to left tackle, which was his position we paid him for. They played great, both of them. No Zach Thomas. He was made inactive, although Alaric Jackson was also inactive. Alaric Jackson has this uh, injury history that's very concerning, so we will need everyone that's out there right now. I am fine with that. We played a defensive front that had 12 sacks heading into the game. And they only had two sacks versus us. A lot of it had to do one play. Stafford actually fell. His hip was hurt. Which played a big part in the second half. Uh, Stafford was banged up. And we were running into a lot of three and outs. We The Colts knew this guy was wobbling. So they were just bringing the kitchen. We were able to get the run going. We weren't able to get the pass going. Stafford really looked banged up. And then the Colts were just getting momentum. It was uh, it was a back and forth affair with a lot of uh, a lot of things favoring the Colts in that second half. Zach Moss started to run better. Our defense was getting gassed out. They're hitting two point conversions to make it twenty three eight. Stop us. Then it's tw- then they go, then they get then it's 23-15. They get a touchdown. And it's like, all right, we're still up eight. They get the ball back, drive down the field. This tight end Algo Tree does his thing. He's getting hyped up. The crowd's getting loud. The defense is getting gassed, hands on the hip. It's not looking very good. And then the Colts end up putting a touchdown on the board. And Getting the two-point conversion to Michael Pittman, it it was a stressful game. They had all the momentum. The Colts head into game. They were 2-1. and one. They were coming off a big win versus the Baltimore Ravens. They play in a division that's probably one of the worst in football. Definitely the worst one in the AFC. Maybe the NFC South is worse. And we had our back against the wall. At, at one and two, you have San Francisco, who's undefeated. Seattle's two and one. We can't really lose many games, especially when we have the Philadelphia Eagles on tap. So everything was, the pressure was starting to mount. You could see Sean McVay on the sideline sweating. He's not really calling the best game plan, but with a hurt quarterback, it is not that easy. I feel he did listen to us running the ball that much that game, and it worked. When the Rams run that much, they just win. Our running backs had 34 carries. Stafford had another two rushes, so that's 36 rushes. It's a 40 pass attempts. I like that split. Personally, I like that split. We need to do that to keep the defenses honest. And if you see, we didn't get sacked that much. DeForest Buckner, who was hurt all week, game time decision, did play, did not do much, and that's a big guy, and we held him in check. So kudos to the Rams' offensive line. A lot of people were down on them after last week's performance, but there was a lot that played into that performance, and I'll give you two words, Zach Thomas. And there was no adjustments made on Zach Thomas's part he did have to block one of the better edge rushers in football. At the end of the day, he did such a bad job. They just made him inactive this game. He's very small for a left tackle. You want your left tackles to be at least tall and big. It's very short. Um, And 
Matthew Stafford showed heart in this one. This was his fifth comeback as a Ram. I believe he's like six or five all-time in fourth quarter overtime comeback. So he just has that ice in his veins. This man was hobbling to the sideline. When he was getting hit, he was hobbling up. It was so hard to watch. As I mentioned, if you watched my live stream yesterday, you could see I, I just felt the pain. It was very hard to watch. But quickly on his hip, he did say in his postgame presser that he is going to play this week against the Eagles. So thank you. Hopefully it was just isolated to that game. And moving forward, we're fine because Brett Ripon in such a big downgrade to Matthew Stafford. So Matthew Stafford toughed it out. The Rams go into overtime, and we get ball first. And what do the Rams do? They throw that ball. They run it, but they're getting they're getting some passes and um, two two out well on a second down. Looks like he has it, but they show another angle of his catch on the sideline, and he clearly dropped it. The ball was out. His feet were in, but the ball fell out of his hand. So I don't know why that review took so long when it was clear as day once you got that side angle from the left side. You could see the ball fall out on the sideline. <clears throat> but the Rams get the first down. Clutch catch by Kyron Williams. Stafford looked like he was just waiting for something to develop. Nothing developed, so he sidearmed it to Kyron Williams, who actually had a very good game catching the ball. He had three catches, 24 yards. Catching is the key word here. <clears throat> he had a lot of drops to him and Stafford, a lot of miscommunication. I think he's being 5'9". Stafford's taller. He overthrew him a few times, but if they could solve that problem, that's huge because Kyron Williams is a very good pass catcher. And it's good to see that they're on the same page. Ronnie Rivers now, another tiny running back, but he's very speed. He has a lot of speed. He's very elusive. He had two catches, 10 yards. We did use Bryce Hopkins a lot as a fullback in this game. That was cool to see. Um, but anyway, Stafford, Stafford just turns into a, a, a god when it matters. And he hits Puka Nakua. Game-winning touchdown. Kind of not the best throw. Uh, Puka had to adjust, but he was wide open. It was a busted coverage. He just knew where to go. He had nothing but daylight. There was two Colts, de Colts defenders as he's running towards the end zone. But Puka runs through people. He is a yak monster. Even when he scored this touchdown, he was even pushing forward while he was in the end zone. And then I don't know if you watched the clip, but the whole team gets over, comes over, celebrates, and then Puka just yells like a madman at the crowd, just looking at the crowd. And I'm telling you, Puka Nakua is the next big thing, not only for the Rams, but in football. He has that personality. He has that image. It's different. The long hair, the strong jaw features, the cool, laid-back surfer vibe. He's just a chill guy, and this is great for the NFL. And if you're a Rams fan, we are blessed to have Puka Nakua be our number two to Cooper Cup. And then when Cooper Cup, hopefully not anytime soon, but does leave football, we have Puka. Them two together are going to be un. Stoppable. I really don't know what coaches are going to do to stop them two. But if you throw your whole defensive secondary at them two, you're going to leave 2 2 at well because you know we're going to just start sending 2 2 on some fly routes. We'll have them two guys killing the 10 to 15 yard, five yard, the inside. We're going to throw Van Jefferson out there in four wide receiver sets, send him in 2 2 deep, let the other two guys kill the inside. Good luck stopping them. And if Kyron Williams is catching the ball like that, that's just another pass catcher. Then you got Higby. This Rams offense is going to be fun. Um, so the Rams win in this one to go 2-2. Two and two. You have to feel good about where we are because if you lose this game, you're 1-3 and three facing the Philadelphia Eagles, who also just won in overtime against the Washington Commanders. That's a tough game. 
regardless of what you may think the Eagles' defense is this year and how many bad teams they've allowed a lot of points to, they're still a good team. They still possess a good front seven. I would say more of a front four now, um, their defensive line. Linebackers ain't the best, and their secondary isn't the best, so that's where we're going to have to take advantage of. Hoping Cooper Cup could come back. His 21-day window is now open. So 2-2, two and two, heading into the Eagles. Then you have the Cardinals on deck. So with Cooper Cup back, there's a lot of bright spots to look for. A win always feels great. It makes the week feel better. It brings the team's energies up. We get to play a home game now at SoFi. I'm sure there's going to be a lot of Eagles fans, but I will be doing my pregame preview this week, either Thursday or Friday. Um, So kudos to the Rams on getting it done. Colts also, uh, pick your head up. Anthony Richardson is going to be a problem in this league. I've seen a lot of great things from him. He has a hell of an arm, and he's fast. Like, he's not just fast, though, like a Justin Fields. He is a very good thrower. And he doesn't have the best wide receivers and core around him, and he was missing two offensive linemen. So, Colts fans, uh, two and two, you look like a really competitive team in your division. The Rams at two and two, uh, with the 49ers winning again at four and oh, we will probably most likely be playing for that wild card. Hopefully, we can beat San Fran in our next matchup. That is a week 18 game. Maybe that's for the division. That's thinking far ahead, but just things popping in my mind. Um, Rams fans, thank you for tuning in. Ramsaholic, smash that like button, subscribe, share, all that good stuff. I appreciate you all for tuning in. Take care of yourself. Take care of your loved ones. I'm your boy, Shay. Follow me on Twitter, actually, at Shay tweeted that, and I'm out. It's 4 a.m. in New Bedford, I'm getting my shit together. City just ain't safe, these kids down for whatever. Letting the lead fly, they flocking just like a feather. I couldn't stay there forever, career not getting better. I ain't no rapper, can't imagine not getting cheddar. They posting pics in their base models, not even leather. It's not even leather. It's 4 a.m. White.